Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. I will read whatever it says. Whatever it says, <laughs> I'll read it. Uh, I'm very excited to let you guys know this episode is brought to you by Cushy Dreams. Uh, I'm a big fan of these guys. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. They specialize in an extraordinary CBD-rich hemp flower, aka bud, in a variety of cans and pre-roll joints and as you can see right now they have a private special reserve um I, it's not a brew it's a blend um, if you guys are looking to calm down a little bit more in 2021 we look we all had a crazy fucking year in 2020 and we're still having a crazy year i feel like the craziness will only continue um, so I highly recommend the CBD products to me. I mean, I, I'll smoke weed every once in a while too, but for those days and times where I don't want to completely get super high and go to La La Land and be unproductive, that's why I think CBD is great. You can enjoy all the health benefits of CBD without getting high. There's under 0.3% THC in these products here. It's cannabis. It ships directly to you. It's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Cushy Dreams, smoke your CBD. Looks and feels, smells just like very high quality marijuana, but it's not. These guys are obsessed with quality. They're constantly doing independent lab tests to show compliance and purity. Every, blotch, every batch is slow cured for two to four weeks. It's grown here in the USA, best of all. And they have got a variety of different strains that are in different ind uh, indica sativa blends like energy, hustle, create, dream, relax, peace. So whatever you're feeling, uh, Cushy Dreams has your back to get, to get it done. Go to cushydreams.com. K-U-S-H-Y, and get some high-quality CBD bud. And at the checkout, use promo code CMP. You're going to get, look at that, look at that graphic. You're going to get 20% off your order, first, second, third, any order. Plus, I believe it's free shipping. So get on that, guys. Um, this episode is also brought to us by Adam and Eve. I'm using my new screen. <laughs> And his screen capabilities. Go to adamandeve.com right now. It's there's a reason why it's the number one. <laughs> Look at that. Look, there's somebody's tiny. It's the reason why it's the number one adult adult toy superstore. They've got tons of great toys. Look at this vibrator, sex toys, women's sex toys, men's sex toys. I bet you didn't realize that there were men's sex toys, but there are. Um, you can probably, uh, oops, that's a little bit of nudity. I'll click away from that. Uh, go to adamandeve.com. Look, Christmas has come and gone, but there's no reason why you can't keep coming. I just made that up. <laughs> go to adamandeve.com. Use the promo code CMP. You're going to get almost any item online for up to 50% off plus free shipping. Get yourself a little something. If Santa didn't bring you what you wanted, go ahead, girl or guy. Get it for yourself. Get yourself a nice little toy. Uh, ex I'm so excited to do this pod. I'm just going to bring these these boys and girls right on in. Uh, here we go here. Um, first guest coming come to the stage. I, I just did stand up at a strip club last night, so I'm still kind of in that mode. Um, first guest, she's a patriot. She's a MAGA yeah. mom. She is an accidental viral sensation. It's Tina Forty. How are you, girl? Hello, Chrissy. I can't keep my... my Thing fucking straight because it's on my lap. You're a little okay. squirrely. I love it. I, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I, I know, know I have a lot of I have a lot of those toys made. Oh yeah. Oh good. <laughs> and I know your dogs are dealing with some diarrhea. So yeah, they're feel, they're feeling they're feeling better right now. But I'm in my living room, so I have to keep my eye out. Good. I can't be in my nice spot where I usually am, where it's quiet. I got to keep an eye on the uh. door. All right. Hopefully they will not be barking yeah. as much. Mm -hmm. And so excited to have this guy. He is the host of Slightly, Slightly Offensive on Blaze TV. He's also a reporter at The Blaze. Elijah Schaefer, my good buddy, my good pal. How are you? You know what? Can you hear me, by the way? Is my mic on? Yes, you sound Dude. good. Well, I am doing pretty well because... The topic and the things we're talking about today, America is possibly at the brink of a civil war. So it's a fun time to be alive. It's a it's a, what a time to be alive. I know it's like we're we're you know we're gathering to podcast under such 
kind of serious circumstances and like kind of serious topics, but I'm like, Hey, everybody get a butt My plug. My dog doesn't have diarrhea. <laughs> so I'm having a little bit of a better day than at least somebody. <laughs> now, um, and I know we might have one or two more guests coming in, but, um, this is already, this is already a great group. I know the, both of us, I mean, there, there was, there was, um, there've been a few marches in DC over the last couple of months. I think, um, the first one, correct me if I'm wrong, was maybe right after the election. I think it was in November at some point. Yes. And then we had one, what feels like a long time ago, but might've only been like two. December two, 12th. Two, yeah. Okay. So that was last month's December 12th, maybe three weeks ago at this point. Uh, and I want to know how, uh, how is this rally that's coming up? And it, you know, it started out, it was going to be just January 6th, but now it looks like it's going to be a couple days full of events. I just saw Jack Posobiec post something that we're going to have events January 5th, and then a couple of meetings on the 6th, 9 a.m., one, you know, all these different locations. How is what's going on um, in DC, January 5th through the 6th? How is this different than these other rallies that we've been to in DC okay. over the past couple months? Um, Cause the other ones I would say were actually rallies. Um, November and December. Well, November actually was better than December cause it was just one place. Like I say, you know, one place, one time, one purpose. Okay, the one in December, more groups got involved and they started, oh, let's do it here and let's do our own thing there. And it kind of December wasn't as good as the one in November. Everyone was scattered. It wasn't a beautiful sea of red, white and blue. And I see the same thing happen. Now, you got to remember, January 6th is not really a rally. The president called on us to just show up. Me personally, I make videos and I call out to all these different groups that want to post. So let's do this and let's have a medical group here and let's have a speakers here. I don't agree with that. I feel if the president calls us and tells us to be at one place, one time for one purpose, that's what you do. It's not about speakers. It's not about notoriety. It's not about any of that. He has us there for a reason. He'll let us know why when we gather. And I feel it should be left at that. And I'm very vocal about it. I'm very upset with all these other organizations that have GoFundMes and raise all money mm -hmm. and have all these speakers. It takes away from the real purpose of the day. And that's my opinion. I don't care whose feelings I hurt. <laughs> No, you're right. I, honestly, it's about clout because in the last one in December too, all right, you had the first uh, March that was the Stop the Steel Coalition and they put something together. I think that's led by Ali and uh, Michael Kudre and some of the other individuals. And then in December, um, you had like Mike Lindell, My Pillows bus tour, uh, which was like the Women's for Trump event. You had Stop the Steel. You had Alex Jones uh, and, and individuals trying to storm the stage. And it was like, if we're united and we're, we're trying to fight basically demonic evil people that are working with globalists to undermine a populist movement in the country, you know, even admittedly by John Kerry from the world mm -hmm. economic forum, as well as the UN, I mean, we're fighting extremely large global and powerful players that have been around for, for century, maybe even, uh, you know, a lot longer than that. And so when you come to the, the conclusion of like, you know, it, this kind of shows you how broken the right wing movement really yeah. is, is because people are so concerned about like being seen and speaking. Mm -hmm. that I, yeah. I feel like I feel like the problem is, is that like even even on the last time people were arguing about what it means to be America first. And uh, some people were following an individual and saying, you know, correcting people. Hey, if you want to be a part of the America first movement, you got to follow this guy who started it. And I'm thinking. America no. first started with Pat Buchanan, at least as a political movement. And also at the end of all this, if your arguments about, you know, at the end of all this are who started what, and your arguments aren't just to support Donald Trump, support the populace. If you're going to start infighting and causing all these problems, you don't know what the hell is yeah. actually happening because we're in a war. Yeah. This is what I posted yesterday. I'm going to read it because, you know, Trump, President Trump is the one who told us to come on the 6th. And like you said, we have all these different groups. This speaker is coming and taking away. He, you know, it's one place where I wrote, Trump will be speaking directly to us on 1-6. He will be given directions of where and when to be leading up to the events. His directions will be the only ones to follow. That's it. His directions are the only ones to follow. And then he posted this morning about the, the different events on the 5th at Freedom Plaza. Then <clears throat> on the 6th, he's going to be at the uh, um, Ellipse and then go to the Capitol. That's it. The Supreme Court, all the other ones that people are doing, it's just in all different times. It shouldn't be. They'll, 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 Trump wants to see you in D.C. These are where he wants people. So all the people that are organizing should step back and listen to our president. He's given us, you know, things for a reason. Do we think that people are getting a little bit 
Maybe their egos are taking over a little bit. Maybe they like kind of leading a group. They like how it feels. Maybe they are. Because, you know, Tina, people have accused you of just being in it for the money. You're just in it to make money. You're just in it to sell shirts, which always makes me angry when I, you know, if I, I mean, it's always like crumbs on Twitter. It's like nobody who ever actually knows you. And Elijah, I don't know if you've ever been accused of similar i don't think you sell any t-shirts elijah but i know I, I just i just make i just make a podcast but of course i have a i have a lot of a lot of people in the movement that don't like me because you know if, if you do anything in the media if you're you gonna have anything. a lot of people who don't like and you. listen i i you know my business is shut down thanks to mayor de blasio in the bronx had to lay off 15 workers and for me to travel to washington dc and to go and be a part of all these things I need gas money, I need traveling money, I need hotel money, and I opened up a little store to get me where I'm going. Yeah. And that's plain and simple. Like people think like I'm getting rich off this. No, it gets me from point A to point B, puts gas in my car. I do have a business, it's closed. Thanks to yeah. the mayor. And thanks to the call. Happy New Year, right? Happy, yeah, New-, Happy New Year. <laughs> I know Tina, I have your Twitter feed up on the screen here. And so I see, because I was looking at this earlier, this Trumpmarch.com, and I was like, because I remember, and I was like talking about this with Elijah at the last this rally. The like, he's fought this, this Trump march is following the president's lead. If you notice, they keep changing it towards the president's. So they're, they're doing it correctly. The okay. other ones aren't. This one is actually changing their, as, as it's going along, they're changing their event. Yeah. As, as the president's changing it. So okay. I, it's, yeah. Right. Because I remember there was confusion uh, at the last rally in December. It seemed like people were just, fo- the, you know, I felt, I agree with you. I feel like the November rally was much more organized. It was one place, one time. And then with the December one, it seemed like more scattered. You know, people, there were a lot of enthusiastic, energetic people there wanting to show support, but they were scattered. They didn't know where to be. There was no itinerary and people were just going to Twitter going, okay, I follow, I follow Alex Jones. Let's see where he at, he's at. Or like, right. I follow Elijah. Let's see where he is. Well, I can answer that because the one in November was actually at Freedom. It had started at Freedom Plaza. From Freedom Plaza, we marched the Supreme Court. The one in December, which is the uh, Woman for America First, was also with AmpFest, <clears throat> which is American Priority, where I went in um, October to speak for five days <clears throat> at the Trump Hotel. Okay. They were at Freedom Plaza. That, that's where it was supposed to be. December's march was supposed to be just Freedom Plaza. And then again to Supreme Court. But then all these other groups came in and who had speakers at Washington Monument and who had speakers at the National Mall and who these unknown groups just decided to make groups and come in. And if you look at the aerial shot from November and from December, you would see the difference right there, how coordinated we were for November. All you saw was a sea of red, white, and blue. And how in December, it was just scattered all over. There wasn't even really a march to Supreme Court in December because of all these other groups that wanted to just make a name for themselves. See, I'm not affiliated with any group. I just go and do it. I do flag drops, but we're not really like, you know, we're a Facebook group, but we don't, you know, make events. Like in Washington, come here, because this is what we're doing. We don't do that. Yeah, it's, re- it's really retarded. Honestly, like what you're saying is because like if we look at this historically speaking, right, the other events were marches, they were rallies, but this is, right, you have the Electoral Count Act of 1867. This is, we need to decide the objections to the Electoral College. You had Samuel Tilden, you had Rutherford B. Hayes in 1866, and they were fighting together, uh, you know, over who was going to win the election. Then you had, they didn't have anything in place to contest this. I might be off by a decade, but it was either 66 or 76, but they're there. And then, so they select five senators, five uh, house members, five Supreme court members to decide the election. All the senators in the house vote upon party lines. Like you would expect Then it has to be decided by the Supreme court. People are pissed because obviously the Supreme court is not elected officials. They're appointed. And so then they have to put in this, this, this act on the six to discuss and to debate a, between the two, two chambers on who should be the president. If there's a, a, a contestant and we haven't had this uh, great of a contestion in a long time um, in many, many decades actually. And so what we're seeing here is like, if people are getting sidetracked with who's speaking and whatnot, this isn't a hype influence or event. This is a political moment to where we are finding out if our republic still stands. And, you know, I mean, and I want to say this, everyone needs to stop being such a pussy. Like if, if, if the election goes to 
you know, uh, Biden and he gets confirmed, like whether they won through rigging or cheating, like in the real world, sometimes evil people win through unethical means. And so what we need to do is come together and find out if he gets confirmed and we need to look and say, who is backing him? Who's behind him? Who is our enemy? What's really going on in a republic? Not like which event did I attend? Who's speaking? What press pass do I have? Uh, how many people are here? It's like, no, we need to come together as the American people, not even as Trump supporters, but as the populace saying, if they can remove an, a leader from our country that we wanted, if they can prevent him from coming in, if they can do it through means that appear legitimate, then we have a very serious problem on our hands. And we don't stop fighting. We don't stop vying for the attention of the American people by doing what? Of course, just unifying behind Donald Trump, who's currently going to be the leader of the populist party, whether he's confirmed into office or not. I believe firmly he was elected duly and honestly yeah. by the American people. And I'm just saying that everyone needs to stop being a pussy about it is because it's like, oh, it was stolen. It was rigged. Well, what do you cry about it? Like, you know, I mean, people win wars mm -hmm. by unjust means. And so oh, if, yeah. they're, if they're doing the wrong thing, then we've got to just up the ante. We've got to start fighting. We, we, we can't keep playing by the rules while they aren't and expect that we're going to receive different results. But the problem yeah. is, is that the Republicans don't have the spine to mm -hmm. fight like the Democrats. They stick together. The Republicans don't. You got Republicans that are against our president. You got Republicans that are against us. We the people. So that's where you'll never find that balance between the Democrats and the Republicans. That's why I don't even want to be affiliated with the Republican Party anymore. I feel we should have a, pa a patriot party. But don't you feel like if we split into a patriot party, then that splits the votes even more? You know, it, now. It can, but it's about the Constitution now. This is way beyond any Democrat or any Republican. This is about our Constitution. Both sides are not following it anymore, if you ask me. Both sides are shitting all over our Constitution. But at least the Democrats get each other's back. Because if you look at, like, the Georgia runoff with, like, Reverend Warnock, people aren't familiar with this, right? You have a black guy, which is, like, already, you know, he's a saint because, you know, black people can do no wrong <laughs> in our country. And, you know, like – since he's black, it's like, okay, cool. Well, we have a, a, a token that we can put out. He's a reverend. But then you look at his track record, right? I mean, he's overseen uh, church camps where kids were assaulted, abused. Pee was thrown on them. They're in open Jeez. lawsuits. Um, you know, his wife accuses him of running over her foot. And, you know, there's body cam footage of this guy, you know, being saying he's an actor. We're trying to protect his reputation. He's constantly promoting anti-Semitism, anti-Israel ideology, calling Jesus a Palestinian, even though it wasn't even called Palestine around the time of Jesus. It was renamed that by the Romans. I mean, this guy is a very interesting individual. Uh, and the Democrats will bury everything for him. They will cover his tracks. They will do everything to fight for his reputation. And they will see to it, possibly, that he's elected into the Senate, into our actual government. And while it's nasty and it's dirty that, that someone would be so conniving and evil to take an individual just because of their skin color and push them ahead as a token, ignoring the character of who they are, Democrats are willing to do whatever they need to make their candidates win. Now, their motives and their end result and goals might be completely evil, globalist and and untouchable in terms of any moral person in this world. But I will say this, even if they have bad intentions, we cannot just sit back and let people who are willing to do what it takes remove our country from underneath us and they're betting on our civility just like mm -hmm. Muslim uh, immigration different things go well, don't you want freedom of religion? And we go, yeah, well, but we don't want to promote a religion that you know promotes sexism, that endangers people in our country, that 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 doesn't think about the uh, equality of our nation. Who's you know set up to seventy percent of people who are Islamic in Islamic countries are sympathetic with jihadists warring against our nation. Like we bring up real attributes, but then they go, yeah, but aren't you guys nice people? Don't you want freedom mm -hmm. of religion? And we're like. Well, we are nice and we do believe in freedom. And so then they start, you know, immigrating a lot of people who don't share our values. And then they encourage people from other countries not to integrate and to continue to divide our nation so that, you know, they use our own open door policies against us. Same thing with the Hispanic immigration as well. So my point being is that, you know, as we are like law abiding good people that walk around and we want to follow the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one side who's currently doing that. And there's only one side. That's why I hate the Republican Party as well, is they will throw you under the bus. Like if you have a compromising mm -hmm. picture of like in you could be like an ex-girlfriend in her underwear. It's not even like sexually weird. It's like, oh, that's inappropriate. You're canned. The Democrats, you can literally be smoking crack with like a 14-year-old, you know, Thai girl, <laughs> yeah, you know, stripping, you know, and, and and they're like, oh, you know, he hit a hard time. Be forgiving. Mm -hmm. And they move on. And his dad yeah. becomes the president. Yeah. Hey, it's like, hey, you know what? 
being the, being a, a politician's son is not all it's cracked up to be. Give him a break. Listen, and, all these <laughs> all these career politicians, they go in with a six figure salary. They come out as billionaires. They're in there for too long. They don't do nothing. They become compromised and they start working against we the people. And now our constitution, our freedoms are at stake right now. Regarding no no matter what side you're on, whether it's Democrat or Republican, right now it's we the people that are being shit all over. And that's got to stop. So basically um, it sounds like the right or even the center. Basically, if you're not if you're not on the left, it's like, should we be cheating too? Should we be fighting dirty also? It's like, I'm not saying yes, but I don't know. It's you also to your point, like they, Elijah, like we're you know, no one's following the rules. Look what they did for four years. They did nothing but abuse President Trump. They did nothing but investigate him. Shh. They did nothing but investigate him and, and everything else with Russian collusion. They got away with doing all that. Four years, they did nothing. Did nothing. Shut up, Guido. Tina, is your dog a Biden supporter, perchance? Is he diarrhea <laughs> Oh, that, that's Guido. Oh. What's his name? Guido. Guido? <laughs> that's that's Italian. New York. Very, very stereotype, right? <laughs> Very no, but, no, but, but you bring up you bring up something very interesting too is like if we talk about okay like a lot of people are confused about what's actually happening on on the six right so like what's going on and like why do we think an election could be overturned and as much as i can like talk about you know the bs what's up bro he's hey, Bryson, muted but we uh we're gonna unmute him yes coming in is you know him you love him rapper youtuber bryson gray we're just gonna unmute his bryson if you, if you can if you you're gonna okay. He's gonna get himself together. Okay, I'm, while he's getting himself together, I'll I say brought this. him in too soon. I'll say this: the, re the reason <laughs> yeah. the reason why a lot of people are confused on what's going to happen is because as the chambers of the house debate for two hours and they try to look at objections, the vice president holds an interesting clause of power that's been debated by political scientists for a long time, which is that he has in quote to to maintain the order and to the direction and order of this hearing. And so some people mean that's as simple as, you know, just keeping order so people don't shout out over each other or perhaps ordering this so that we don't undermine the Republic of the United States and then he can, you know, flip the voting of the, of the chambers. So the, the vice president has a, has a big question to ask himself of like, how loosely is he going to interpret, you know, this, this, uh, this electoral count act of 1867? How loosely would he? Well, if he was a Democrat, uh, there's, you know, I mean, he's about as loose as like a, you know, like a 1980s prostitute. I mean, honestly, <laughs> he would take it, he would take it to wherever it needs to go. But since he's a Republican, this is where they, they understand, like you saw today, mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell, this is where we get into this weirdness is that this is, I don't think that anything's going to happen particularly because Mitch McConnell who's leading the Senate is holding up the $2,000 checks yeah. in agreement for people to not object to the electoral college. So he's saying, wow. If you object to the electoral college, then we're not going to pass the two thousand dollar checks. We're not going to help the people. So he's holding over the welfare of the American people to get politically what he wants to continue. Mitch, that's so shady. That's so sleazy. Ugh. Mitch yeah. the bitch. That's what he gets. <laughs> Mitch the bitch. My next chart. Nah. <laughs> so by holding that, by holding the stimulus checks, who is he trying to sort of bully? He's trying, like, he's trying to whip the Senate. He's trying to whip Republicans yeah. in the Senate because obviously Trump wants the $2,000 stimulus checks. And so if Trump's out of office, which would happen if they allow the checks, they'll still go into the next election cycle with a positive foundation saying, well, but we may not have got Trump in, but we did get you the money Trump wanted. So look how we work with Trump's direct economic action. That's and it's more politically work. advantageous. <clears throat> But actually, it's not going to work with people like us. With everyday people that are going to Washington, it's not going to work. Like you, I, I can tell you, I'm coming for them in the in the midterms. They're, that's it. They're done. They're done. How so, Tina? I, I, you're putting all the people on the ballots. The Patriot Party. I'm really going to push for that. I'm already working with people on that behind the scenes. Okay, good. Uh, Bryson, can you hear us? Are you settled? I, I, <laughs> good I can hear y'all now. Can y'all can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good to have my, you, buddy. My AirPods were dead, and I was just so <laughs> confused. And I was working on my album, and I lost track of time. And then I said, and then I saw your DM and said, "Oh my god." <laughs> oh my god, it's two o'clock. No, glad to have you. Glad we were just talking about the difference between this rally that's coming up January. Well, it's not a rally, but the event that's coming up January 5th and 6th, how that's different than what we, cause we were, we all, we were all there in November. We were all there in December and that those were more people led, um, you know, rallies, gatherings, whereas Trump is actually saying, Hey, 
he's calling all of us out. He wants us there. Uh, it's a little, it's a little nerve wracking. It's a little scary. Um, you know, I've had friends and followers say to me like, well, what's the point of going out? Like, you know, what, what difference would it make to see, you know, would it make a big difference to Trump to see as many people out there as possible? You know, will more bodies in the streets next week actually, you know, help, help one way or another? Uh, I, I, I think it'll make a difference. And it's, and it's not about helping uh, actual like certifying electors or whatever. It's not about helping that. It's about just everybody being there to support Trump. Uh, and, you know, just in case something goes down, I feel like, you know, a 1776 repeat could potentially sp be sparked Sorry, there. Again. You know, yeah. I'm not again. I'm not against the idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I'm is scary. This I'm is a like girl and I'm not against it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who would fight this? Let's talk about this because, look, I, there's three scenarios here. Number one. There is like an uprising, like a counter revolution, 1776. But then obviously that leaves us open to invasion from the UN and also peacekeeping mm -hmm. missions from, from uh, uh, Europe as well, right? You have these coalitions. And if you look at the, the violations that we would bring in Geneva and whatnot, they could technically occupy soil. So we could end up fighting against global powers as the wow. as sitting and standing government tries to maintain the uprising. But number two, it could be a civil war where states themselves could – interlock and war against each other that doesn't allow any type of coalition with europe it does allow the un to hold peacekeeping uh, uh envoys but it does also create an issue of like you know we lose coastal cities we lose a lot of our ports it causes a, a huge economic issue as well as what happens with military fort bragg issues in the center in states that secede it's a disaster but number three it's like it could just become sort of how the last revolution started where it's a lot of just guerrilla warfare in small pockets of the country, like escalations of violence that we're already seeing now in, in city centers. It? Oh, well, we're seeing, I mean, the Pacific Northwest is it. currently a rioting right now and the Patriots are trying to storm the Oregon uh, uh, chamber. They're trying to storm the Seattle chamber. They're trying to arrest Kate Brown. Like, I mean, that's what's happening in the, I mean, no one's talking about it, but it's the DHS it's federal happening. police are there. there. People are, it's escalating. I mean, I haven't seen right wingers until now start to smash the windows of government buildings and they're doing it. So, I mean, you have these like three options of things that are happening and it's like, I mean, no one thought the last revolution would turn out well either. So I'm not <laughs> against, I'm not against revolution. I'm just going with these three scenarios, which one would we take? And my honest either. question is which one would turn out better? Either. I look at it like this, the way this country is going. Is going downhill, and if they are able to literally steal the election in front of our eyes, and nobody still has, hasn't explained the video that came out of Georgia yet. So if, if they right. are able, if they are able to steal this, then it's going to be bad regardless. So each scenario has a bad has has a potential to be bad. So at this point, it's whatever because that's what it is what it is. Patriots versus, Patriots versus everybody. That that's the right thing everybody. Want. Everybody that includes Congress, that includes Senate, that includes we, oh, we oh. the people, we the, they work for us. The government Back. is ours. That, that, that's basically <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? That that's our government, technically. So, but it feels yeah, like they forgot who they're working for. It well, seems that's like why we're gonna fuck and remind them. That's what but they how do we communicate? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, we like these are the questions I have legitimately when it comes to like an uprising, right? And this is to the FBI agent watching us right now. Um, <laughs> you know, if you if you have any information, let us know. But you know, like when people talk about this, I think of like I try to think of logistics. I try to understand communications, right? We don't under we don't control any of the servers. We don't control any of the landlines, any of the fiber optics. We don't control big tech communication where all hubs and, and centralization comes into play. Um, these companies are all bought into the left wing agenda. We don't. Have of any educational institutions uh currently most most chambers in inner cities and places with with a high capacity and dense populations are controlled by these people most port cities are controlled by the democrats i mean it, it's i'm not against the idea but i'm trying to understand because basically the reason why the last revolution seemed to work is the british empire betted against us uprising so they did not have mm -hmm. enough troops that were currently available and a lot of times we had the french that helped create blockades that prevented the proper supply routes for the british to come in they had an ocean to travel but when you realize that like the coast the ports and the centralized major cities as well as the federal i mean we have now we have bases right in every single state that's a red state there's a federal base and so like i'm trying to understand and i'm not doubting this it's just like what 
would this look like and how do we would we actually create a resistance well, that wouldn't turn out like Star Wars? <laughs> we can have we, we can have all those things though. We can create our own service. The pro well, the reason we are here is because conservatives are punks for the most part. Republicans are punks. But yeah. don't get me wrong, that is the reason we're in this position. We don't have nothing. We don't we not we're not in control of any any industry. But at this point, you have two choices: comply or fight. And uh, even with all even with all eyes against me, I'm 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 willing to fight because I'm not complying to anything. Me so, too. Um, I will not comply. And I, I agree, though. The eyes, the eyes are stacked against us. We don't have nothing. And most of us are punks. So not even ha I don't even think half the conservatives <laughs> will be willing to fight. See, liberals, they may not have the best ideas. But one thing they're going to do is go out there and fight for the ideas. Mm -hmm. And they're they going to go outside of the law for their ideas. And conservatives, like, don't break the law, which I agree with. But now they are literally trying to create laws to uh, oppress our, our rights and our freedoms, which they've been doing it slowly for years, but now they're just really taking it a little too far. And I'm starting to seeing a lot of people saying, you know what, screw this, it's time to fight. So, I mean, comply or fight. I mean, you gotta choose one of them. This is not, you can't play middle to the, middle of the Who road. Who starts the fight? The what does That's fighting what even look like? You know, it's yeah, yeah. Who start? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, because I'm, I'm actually where you're at mentally, and I'm at the point mm -hmm. where I'm like, no, I'm ready for something. But what does that? Because I think that people keep asking myself too is like, they go, okay, cool. You talk about a civil war could happen. You talk about it could also be a honeypot from the CIA trying to cause, you know, a, a UN, uh, you know, peace envoy to try to keep peace, create a more global order inside of our our country. But I mean, like. How does this start? Does a does a, does a like a state secede? Right, because that's what we had the, the civil war. It's like they signed a a a pact, like a writ, and they seceded, and so that was like an act of war. Texas. In order for there to be a fight, what do we do? Well, there are many ways. In Texas, Texas is the only state, if I'm not mistaken, that can legally concede. Uh, I mean, secede, and uh, you know, once again, I'm with that. Also, like I said, it's comply or fight, and at this point, I am like. I'm, I chose my side. I'm whatever. You said what it what it looked like. Well, that's depending on how things go to six. I personally think there's a reason that Trump won us all there on the six. Mm -hmm. I, I do not know what that reason is, but I do know there are going to be uh, at least a hundred thousand uh, people ready to fight out there. And a lot. Uh, and uh, you've been there after nine p.m. when it gets dark in D.C. Oh the yeah, y'all, you, you, Tina, you it's too. It's a war zone. It's a yeah, war zone. Y'all, right. y'all know what goes down. <laughs> Yeah. So, it's, so it's, yeah, it's crazy. It feels like the purge out there. My mom, I brought my mom last time. Mm -hmm. She came in the streets with me, and she was like, <laughs> she was like, "What is God. you know what what is this?" So everybody is already in the mode. So depending on what happens, I'm hearing uh, mixed reviews about what people think Pence is going to do. Uh, there are a lot of senators stepping up to uh, say they're going to reject it. So I mean, we'll see. And uh, we, nobody knows exactly how it's going to look like, but everybody knows something is brewing or something's going to happen. Yeah. Let's be realistic. Yeah, if you look at this, um, I'm going back to Jack's tweet here. Uh, if you are coming, make sure to be inside or with a group by nightfall. And, and you know, no, the, the, this this feels a little different than previous rallies. You know, I'll have it's friends. Not friends. It's, it's, not not it's not a rally. It's not a rally. It's not a rally. We're, call, we're calling it. A, what's a better <laughs> word? I'm putting on Trump gear. You know that, right? The, the Proud Boys are going in black block. And yes, sir. Putting on Trump on Trump gear. So. You know, from my understanding, though, with with all this being said and done, is like I know the ATF was trying to say that they caught some rings trying to smuggle in guns to DC for this. I don't know the the validity of, of these claims, but you know they're saying uh, you know the typical thing that white supremacist groups are trying to smuggle in uh, you know arms, you know for potential conflict. But you know what I do know is that you know Marielle Bowser, the mayor of DC, uh, has essentially shut down the city. You know, indoor dining everything to make this as difficult as possible, as chaotic as possible. She shut I have down good contact. I have good contacts in the MPD, and you know they've let me know a few things. Like number one, definitely uh, when they the last event, and a lot of people don't know this, uh, the last two events actually, um, they have gotten orders to essentially. Um, where at left wing events, it's like called a de-escalation tactic, where they don't intervene into into times of conflict. And also, too, let's say they see a misdemeanor happen, like an assault, someone gets punched, <clears> they <throat> might they might be told to automatically de-escalate or to bring down the charge in their head to see if it's not worth getting involved in. So if it's an infraction, then you count the risk. Well, at the Trump events, they are given down from not only the police chief, which who Mariel Bowser fired the guy who was doing a good job because he wouldn't comply and hired somebody new because the other guy was white and she thought 
that they needed more diversity. Um, and so then they brought in a new police chief who they actually have an escalation in order to keep peace, meaning like you could get a misdemeanor for littering. They're looking wow. for ways to ticket okay. to target and incite Trump support. I was outside. I was outside the Harrington in December. And a bun bunch of police showed up and it was an omnipresence where they're there for show. They came in riot gear and they're like, go on the sidewalk. God, what we're doing is chanting USA, USA, USA and singing outside. We weren't bothering anybody. If you don't get on the sidewalk, we're shutting the hotel down. And I'm not one to fight with the police, but I basically told them, slow your roll because we're not doing anything. It's all right when Antifa comes down and they burn loot and riot. <clears throat> but we're sitting here going USA, USA, and I have to get on the sidewalk or you're threatening to close the hotel down? Are you kidding me? And they're there with riot gear. And, but they're not, they're not there. They won't stop Antifa from walking down the street, but they'll stop up from stop us from chanting USA, USA. Have it on a live video. I fought with the cop on a live video. And I told him, you're only here for an omnipresence. I know what you're here for. And, and, and a, a lot of officers are getting fed up with uh with the nonsense too. I can let you know that in DC when I was there because uh, there's a lot of officers in DC that are uh that, that, that they are fans of my music. And then like me and Forjado Blow was having a conversation with them and the stuff they were telling us it was like they they fed up too. Hmm. They they might let you knock out an Antifa member honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where they were standing, like how you know where their views were the cops in DC because I remember in December like yeah there was like the little the little stabbing that happened and the, the cops had like lined up and they're like, all right, we're just going to like protect this block and things did deescalate. And it was interesting. Cause I was like, huh, I wonder how they feel like with their thoughts. I tried to talk to a couple, but they're like stone faced. They don't you know? be stone faced. They're, and, uh, and Elijah, you mentioned, and this was a video that you had put out after the last um, like rally. You're like, look, these cops, they, they're trained, they're skilled. They have the, the ability to deescalate and to break up crowds quickly. And it's the, it seemed almost like they were choosing, you know, not to use their not skills. Well, of course, like look at look at this dichotomy here. I mean, on one hand, uh, you know, we have this place called BLM Plaza, which is terrorist, you know, it's terrorist haven, aka. Um, and what's really weird about this, this is this is so disrespectful, right? This is our nation's capital, this is our White House. How dare you, as a city manager, right, as a mayor, cordon off the front street in front of the people's house and partisanly make it in favor of a communist enemy group that requires there to be such a distance made of fences between the White House and the actual people that we no longer even have access for basic tourism, mm -hmm. let alone this now has become a haven, right? Some of the nicest buildings you have, you know, Christian science, which I'm not, I'm not a fan of, but I mean, you have a religious building. You have, uh, you know, some of the nicest hotels that are like 650 to a thousand dollars a night on this street. This is our, our city. And she says, this is BLM Plaza. Not only that, this has become the meeting point for uh, Black Bloc Antifa, for uh, Shut Down DC, for some more radical groups that have actually attempted or have put out hits and assassinations on my life would probably kill any of me you too. guys too. But me you have that. Yeah, you're me and, you're me, on the chud list. Yeah, me, 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 me and your picture. <laughs> yeah, me, me <laughs> no, and okay, but, uh, but they uh, have that. And then at this event, let's say, the, and, and, <laughs> and when they're there, they can keep retreating back to this area that the city has made like a safe spot mm -hmm. and the police protect them. But then the city and people around there pressure Hotel Harrington and Harry's to shut down. During and that was our safe spot. Yes, that which is a safe, safe spot, spot for the right. So the right doesn't get a meeting point. We don't get a no. safe spot even on private property. Mm -hmm. But on public property, the left not only gets a safe spot, it's not just public property property this isn't like a random ass park that we just stuck people in this is like in front of the people's house and so yeah. you see this one-sided protection of conflictual conflictual ideology and you realize that we are enemies in our own country that we are looked at as foreign agents as foreign actors as an invading people in our own city because of corrupt backed people like the open society foundation politicians like muriel bowser who happens to have the last name of a a uh, very bad character from Mario, which is uh, is ironic. So yeah, very spiky back, very aggressive. Yeah, L uh, lesbians, <laughs> crazy, crazy. No comment. <laughs> yeah, we'll get in trouble for that one. You know me, I get in trouble all the time. Well, you know, I'm just waiting to have that one. Hey, right wing or left wing, <laughs> lesbians are crazy, man. Uh, like, one girl in a relationship is enough. <laughs> you, you, you know I agree. <laughs> Guys, I want to hear what are your what are your hopes for um you know, we're taping this a little bit early, but what are your hopes for the f January 5th, 6th, 7th? What are your fears? Uh like what would be a a best case scenario to come out of these these next couple events? 
Transparency. I'd like to see some transparency for once. Um, maybe on the 6th, I'd like to see the objections happen. I'd like to see transparency happen after the objections. They just throw everything out there. I want President Trump to do a time entire dump of everything, of everything. Everything, that, that, everything, everything that, that's going on, just, just expose the swamp for what it is, whether he you know, takes it on the six, whether he loses, I think it need, needs transparency at this point for everyone. I say we're in a war and I'm making music for the latter, so. <laughs> You're making war yeah. tunes, yeah. The first yeah, time I'm ever coming down, the other two times I came down to DC, I was, you know, my hoodies, my hats, I got a vest, I got a helmet. You know, because now I'm a target. We're targets. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're literally on the list. I, I want to buy bulletproof vests, but all of them are sold out in stores. So I don't know where to yeah. get them. Yeah, I, I got um, I got uh, I got mine on Amazon. It's mine's just stab proof, but you can put the plates in it to make it bulletproof too. Listen, okay, I'm trying, wow. if I can get one, I want. <laughs> I have that. pink pepper spray. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of stuff. I'm driving to DC. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I, I always I have to. The FBI asked me to wear a flak jacket when I'm in DC. I wear one everywhere, actually, as natural recourse. But I recommend everybody to do that. You know, uh, I, there's a good company. I, they sponsor my show, but they like you know Kyle Rittenhouse was wearing their their armor the night of, of in Kenosha. And I tell people, wow. if it's good Kyle, it should be good enough for you. Uh, but it's AR500, and they'll have some of the best deals. Um, I'm not even gonna say my code because I'm not gonna plug that on somebody else's show. But if you can you, plug it. I don't care. No, no. But I'm saying if you go to AR500 mm -hmm. and you go there, um, they they tend to be really good with supply chain and they tend to be able to get things to you pretty quickly. But also, I recommend too sometimes if you go to like an army supply store and you buy uh, just the vest itself and then you just order plates online. Yes. You can usually buy them separately um, and you can get Kevlar, which is like fairly expensive. But you can also just get like the category four plates, which work for rifle rounds if you want to, but they're 30 pounds. And so it's like, man, I get I'm tired of 30 pounds no. of weight all day. I, on run, your I run, I run races. I, I do go rocks. So I have Spartan. to run with the plates. I do Spartans oh. and I do go rock. So I have a go rock military backpack that I usually have 40 pounds in. And then on top of it, I have all my equipment. That You're putting me to really shame. You're putting me to shame. <laughs> Can I get that? Can I get that before? Because I'm going to DC early, early on the fifth. So is there a way I can go get to an army supply vest? store? Go to an army supply store, and you can buy the vest and the weights and the plate separately. They'll have like mm. plates mm. somewhere that you can buy, and then like because people buy the vest complete, and they're like, "We're sold out," but you can buy the plates and the vest separately, and then just you can just slide them in. Every plate carrier basically carries the same standard size plates, so you're okay. not gonna like get the wrong one. Okay, all right, because I'm 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 having that, and I'm you know I'm driving for a reason. I could fly, but certain things I can't bring. With me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm have gonna a vest with just a lot of pockets for snacks. I don't know. I think snacks. snacks. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm bringing. Snacks. Just sure. a lot of snacks. <laughs> oh my god, I'm coming with flashlights and solar batteries and yeah, like everything yeah. you can think of. I'm coming. I'm going like, to Cabela's like before I go. I'm not gonna explain why, but. Elijah, <laughs> Elijah, do you have a coupon code? <laughs> yeah, I, it's AR500. I think it's offensive is the code, and you get like 25 to 30 percent off all yes. of your content. But I don't I wouldn't plug that on anybody else's show, but I'm just saying that it's you should get them too. Chrissy, I'm telling you, all you guys for your shows, uh um, food supply, armor, yeah, medical yeah, packs. Yeah. Like we're going into like unstable times, and it's like yeah. not saying, oh, so you sell this to your viewers because so you just make a lot of money, meaning why not provide like just you sell sex toys and like CBD and stuff. And it's like, well, as much as you like say that's bad, it's like every couple <laughs> or people have got a couple of things from those and my dog takes CBD. So it's like, but also like everybody needs, like I was saying, like I brought, I have a med pack that helps with like gunshot wounds and chest Jesus. seals. And then like somebody got their lung punctured at the last event. And it's like, mm -hmm. if I was there and they were in critical condition, we like you, you, you think you're just like, Oh, when is someone going to get their lung punctured? Why do I need to walk around with chest seals at an event? And it's like, well, people that's that the last why. Trump event got their lungs popped. So yeah, it's, it's kind of scary though. It's scary to think about this because I, I mean, I'm going there as like a sort of member of the media, basically just independent, doing my own thing. Like I just ordered my own mic. Thing. I'm just gonna like pretend I told I'm there. You, I told you it's gonna be hard. They're gonna. I have a feeling they're gonna scramble cell services that day. Of course, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah. I'm coming so, deep though. I'm coming deep with. I'm coming deep with the game. Some of them, some of them, some of them ain't trying to. Tyson, I'm gonna be with you. Hey, just, I'm letting you know. Hey, Antifa and some trust supporters that try that, that be planning to attack me, don't play with Bryson. I'm just yeah. letting you know. 
I'm no, the wrong person too. to play with. They put my house up. They put the yeah. front of my house up online. They, they didn't Jesus, even, really? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah they, did. they put my house up. They, they didn't put my right address on there. They, they didn't even know my right address. They so dumb. Yeah, they're they talking to my house. house. Parents, they talk to my parents, and I'm like, I don't, I don't live there. I don't live there for a long time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At least if my address gets out, at least like send me something from my Amazon wish list. I don't uh, know. Just... I would send blue shit. They mail blue shit to my house. Oh, in Texas, we are wanting you to show up to our houses. Like, I was about to say. It's like, we're hoping you do. Like, please come onto my property because we have really good castle doctrine here. And we can <laughs> literally blow your brains out if you step foot on our property with, without after, not, not much justification. So you have it's a like, lot of snacks in Texas. Hey, okay. like, you want to know something? Not even just like a war itself. What about when they, when, you know, they, they bring out the national guns and they start shooting at us with the rubber bullets and the grenades and the tear gas and they shit. Deployed they deployed troops in Santa Monica. Someone, yeah. I just to send me some yeah. images. They deployed troops they yesterday by the Santa Monica Pier uh, to keep people off the pier. And I'm going, that doesn't make any sense. Why are you deploying troops in Santa Monica right ahead of the six? I don't know. I'm just wondering what they're planning. No, hey. so that's what I'm saying. You don't know who's the enemy at this point. The enemy yep. within. Yeah. You don't any know. Any um, enemy, you have an invitation to my house in North Carolina. I mean, you could just come, you know, if you want to tag me, open invitation to anybody want to step outside my door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nice guy. <laughs> oh, also, I got, that's just, and I got pit bulls and rat wireless when they come to my house. I have a turtle. I have a tortoise. Um, <laughs> I leave the I leave the top of the cage open. You don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> no. I have a hamster. <laughs> oh boy, it's, cra it's crazy times. It really is. We're in we're in crazy times. But this time, I am taking this um. January 6th, very seriously. It's a, a totally different level. I mean, I'm coming with a smile on my face, but I'm also coming prepared for everything. I always wanted to be a Marine. I missed my calling. And um, cause I was a mom very young, but you know, I have my dad's Marine badge on me and his, my American flag. You tell people that you were, and, I would believe I know, you. I know, you, right? You're in my shape, mother, you can do push -ups. My mother's handing me my father's Korean War helmet to wear. <laughs> Says, I can't take this. What if I lose it? <laughs> You're like, I'll give you PTSD. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, this is like, we're, we're laughing now, but this is serious shit. No, this is serious. It, it, it is serious. It roll is. deep. Roll deep is my advice. My advice is to roll deep. I know sometimes people be seeing me by myself in DC at nighttime. Like, Bryson, why are you by yourself? I'm crazy. But listen, roll deep. I'm telling everybody, like, if, if you got a squad out there, if you ain't got one, find one uh, and, just, and just roll deep because they try to single people out. Yes, they do. Hmm. It's like, do you think there will be a heavy Antifa or resistance or BLM presence there? Or do you think okay. the threat could be Absolutely. coming from somewhere else? No, no, they're, they're, they're going to be there too. Be sure. there. So I was wondering that they felt like, well, we won. What's the point of coming out still? No, but they, I guess they didn't win. They have a sign. It, it, says, it says, fuck Biden. Like, we didn't vote for like any capitalism. They're not. They, hmm. they, you no, know, I think this is where like. You know, groups like th this is not a, a smack on them, but a lot of like, you know, um, startup groups like sometimes PragerU or Turning Point or people will like sort of use uh, Antifa as like a monolith and be like, oh, these are Biden supporters. But unfortunately, they're anarchists. Yes, they're radical leftists. But, you know, like I, even moderate Democrats didn't want Biden. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, radical leftists. Yeah. Maybe they would get a little more behind someone like Bernie, but they're definitely not supporting a 40 year well, career. What I can politician. tell you in New York, in New York, I can tell you that BLM came together with us um, in the city. And we're also having a March, January 10th um, for our freedoms in New York. And BLM came together with us and they marched in the city with us outside the um, assemblyman houses that put up the, the, the bill to the legislature for the. Uh, forced vaccines and everything Cuomo's doing. We have pictures, yeah, all of yeah. us together, BLM, Trump supporters. They, we came together in New York. That's wow. Awesome. Which is, right, so there's, this, there's this bill that I think they're trying to push, and I think it came out of New York, that, that yeah. basically make anyone who they think is a threat or anyone who they think might yeah. <laughs> might be yeah. a yeah. suspected, suspected case or suspected carrier. They can just basically you anybody home. can be detained at any time for any yeah. reason for any length of time. And that's and we all came together thing. for that. If you go if you go <laughs> onto Mike G's page, you'll see he has it live everything. You see the BLM and you see Trump supporters and we all shook hands and they Mike came G, together. Who's Mike G on Twitter? Uh, Mike G's in Brooklyn. Um 
when we do like our borough rallies together. So Mike G does Brooklyn, you know, who's in charge of the Bronx, who's in charge of Queens. When we do all our little rallies and stuff, when we go to Albany or we go in front of de Blasio's house and burn a communist flag. <laughs> and we do stuff like that, but actually BLM came together with us. They just like, you know, we, we joined forces against that bill. Wow. Nobody wow. wants that. Nobody wants that. Yeah, Not, and no regular person wants anyone to be able to come to your house and take your granddaughter, your daughter, your son, even yourself out of your house because they have a they feel that you're sick and you have COVID or for any other reason. Well, yeah, That's in February, I remember we would see footage from China, people getting ripped out of their apartments and they're get welded shut. And we think, oh, that's a world away. That would never happen to us. And oh, it's like- That bill is, is going on to yeah. the floor in New York. Jesus, scary. Yeah. So I'm not joking. I would take it offline. I would rather to just do things and not say things honestly anymore. Like I'm, I'm kind of done telling people my moves, but I, but I, mm -hmm. but I am honestly, when I hear about these kind of things, you know, I, I think it puts it to perspective truly how important it is to let people know that, you know, we are in a fight against very disingenuous and evil global players <clears throat> who will disregard all of your civil rights, all human rights. And it shows you how well their culture war has worked because, you know, I made a joke even today that, you know, people are talking about these, you know, crazy anti-maskers, you know, kind of pressuring people, I mean, uh, you know, pressuring people to to not wear masks as being the crazy ones. And I go, no, it's, it's the crazy mask people that are the crazy ones like they're like mentally ill running around the streets screaming and like pressuring and bullying yeah. everyone into wearing masks anti-maskers aren't asking anyone not to wear masks yeah. they're just choosing not to themselves and i go that's just a choice of personal liberty anybody who walked around begging anyone to not wear a mask is a moron it's like let people do whatever they want if you want to wear a mask you do whatever, whatever you need right. to but, exactly but it's Your like that works leave me alone but you realize well how do we get here it's like well you know when you start praising people who are gender confused right that's mental illness and that's fine i have mentally ill friends who are depressed have anxiety disorders i mean people have mental illness they don't need to be shot per se but it's like you start saying these people are really you know they're on to something and then you start getting advice from children about sex changes and sexuality and you start like basically centralizing mental illness as sort of a dog but a, like to lead and these people feel emboldened to pressure and put their mental illness on the rest of the world. And, the, and all the same people sitting here and we're going, what the hell's going on? Like, I'm not going to accept this degeneracy and this BS mm -hmm. like, as a good, like thinking I know about this stuff. I'm just, it's not good for society. So then now we get into like a real serious, not just like about sex and gender into like where this is actually like putting things on our face, whether we can breathe or run our businesses. And, you know, don't be surprised that they've set up the culture and all institutions to take the side of the mentally ill, crazy people. Cause as long as those people have an outlet, then the, the majority, the same people don't have a voice. It creates schisms and divisions. We're so busy fighting each other that they just swoop in and keep doing whatever the what hell they want. Not only do they have support, but they are getting supported by uh, by the top of the food chain. There's all, all these companies on social media. You can threaten somebody for for not wearing a mask, but if you say something against wearing a mask, they'll try to fact check your statement. Or me, mm -hmm. I, I made a song called "God Soldier." Literally, just said Bible scriptures in it. They ban that off TikTok. Wow. Uh, they, oh yeah, my stuff get banned on social media all the time. <laughs> Uh, just repeat the Bible verses, but you can sit up there and ha watch a 13 year old girl half naked on TikTok dancing to mm -hmm. Cardi B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, wow. it, it, yeah, yeah. It's just crazy. So, so good. <laughs> in, in 2020, especially 2021, it's going to get worse. Good is evil and evil is good. And if you're praising good, you will be persecuted. You will get banned, things like that. So, to his point, we have gotten too far and people are allowing it. If everybody was set up to the government, they can't do nothing. But the government is so good at marketing. The left is so good at marketing that their ideas become the loudest idea in the place. And really, they're not even, they're only like these far left crazy people are probably not even 20% of the population. But since their voices, their voices get elevated so much and uh, pushed and our voices get down we get shadow banned we yeah. have to do all types of we have to be so. nice yeah. yeah 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 so well yeah. you know i'm not nice but yeah no it's ex it's like <laughs> acceptance either. it's acceptance to the point where you're letting the crazy people run things and it's yes. like yeah we've been conditioned over the last few years it's like well the the louder and more offended you are the more power you have whether you're right or wrong it's just if you complain and like uh, you know, say you're offended, say you're whatever triggered. It's like, oh, everybody backs away. And by the way, like conservatives do it too now. Like the conservative movement is ran by um, degeneracy. So very insane. 
Yeah. And I know it's what I was telling you last time, Bryce. And I was like, you have to make a song called Wet Ass Bible and maybe you won't get banned <laughs> off TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> or, or 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 banned from coming to events or you know, people working with me. Maybe I maybe I should just join the join the club. It's crazy. I'm at the point now where there are people that if they're in a picture with me and they work for the DOE, they get a phone call. You were in a picture with Tina Forty in Manhattan. Wow, She's too seriously? political. Yeah. So I could start insane. I'm like, me political? No. You sound oh, like yeah. a mobster too, though. I'm, I'm weary of you, Tina. I'm like, <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna ask me? Oh, for I'm, a I'm rolling deep too in DC. Trust yeah. me. Let's go. <laughs> I did buy new running sneakers. <laughs> I'm like, in, I'm literally in DSW. By the way, props to DSW. I was in there about 45 minutes. No one said anything to me. Um, I was like, this is great because that's what I'm doing now. I'm just walking into places where I used to. Uh, I would walk in with one because I was like, you know what? Let me just. Let my automatic thing be to walk into places without one and let me just see what happens. And I do it with Dunkin' Donuts. They don't say shit. Tim Hortons, they don't say anything. I do it Subway, Metro North Railroad. Nobody says anything. It's great. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let me get a fine. But nobody wants to give you a fine. Nobody wants to like, nobody wants to do that. But like, I'm in DSW buying, you know, shoes to like run. I'm like literally doing like mini laps around the thing. I'm like, can one of you, I'm like saying to the employees, like, can one of you chase me? I just want to see if I can, what shoe is best for like dodging. Where are Tim's? Attacks. Where are really? combat boots? I'm wearing Tim's. I don't have that. I don't have I'm wearing those. black Tim's. I yeah. want a Yeezy. All right, all right. Yeah. I have I have black <laughs> Salkany running shoes. And then finally, after like 45 minutes, somebody, an employee did come over and like hand me a mask, but she wasn't cunty about it. She wasn't like, you have to, wow. you know. I was like, you know what? This is all right. I kind of was like, okay. This is all right. I would have put it in my pocket it. and said, thank yeah. you. Have a Thanks good day. for the free <laughs> one. Yeah, I like, I'm, I'm almost done. So cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any tactical gear. I might check out, I might use Elijah's code. And uh, see if they have something cute. Can I get a tactical vest, but with cleavage? Like I want to. <laughs> yeah, no, you could. Uh, they come. Could, uh, they're one size fits. Mo they're one size. So you have to like get the, the things on the side. Yeah, but you know what? But I, what I recommend for you is what I got for my producer. Um, she's really small. Her name's Savannah Hernandez, and she's a great journalist too. Um, and she's uh, about like five foot four, and she's like half Mexican, half Filipina. So you know her frame is not she's the largest. Um, uh -huh. But what I got her is is um, you know like. Okay, you know like how lesbians use like binding bras to like yeah, hold down their hips. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So right, there's like so they don't I don't know like that boobs here. Yeah. I don't know what out. that material is. I don't know what that material is, but there's there's a um one that AR five hundred sells, but if you don't have time to get it there, you can get it somewhere else. But they have it's it's called like a binding uh, under jacket. It's not it doesn't actually hurt your breasts because that's what those bands are meant to do is like spread the the pressure. But you wear it under and it's tight, and you pull it as tight as you can on the side. It does make you look flat chested, but it, what it does is it prevents you <laughs> from looking boxy as a girl. Oh. So you could wear it all day. And then you put the Kevlar in there. Um, you could put real plates too, but I recommend doing Kevlar unless you're like a high target, right? Because Kevlar could stop like nine millimeter different things. So I would put the Kevlar in and then put on like a larger baggier shirt. So already like people couldn't tell that you're curvy or not. And then just wear like a cool like hanging coat over it. Then you look stylish, but low key, you're like got a binding <laughs> Kevlar underneath wow. as a girl. And it's not heavy. It's only like six pounds. So then you don't have to deal with the 30 pound weight as a girl. Um, and you get to try being a lesbian for a day. And then maybe I could stuff, I could put an implant or something on top of the vest so that the boobs. Yeah, like silicone booty yeah. things. Yeah. And then the bullet just bounce off. It's like a fembot situation. And then it's not assault. If some creep creeper guy comes up to you, you're like, hey, well. Yeah, grab it. It's fake. Enjoy your life. <laughs> <laughs> not calling the police. Your spikes come out. Yeah. <laughs> Got the feel. Um, wow. This is Hide interesting. Hide some Biden votes in there. <laughs> We're in case you need them. Yeah, a lot of interesting people come out at these things. I don't know if you guys have met or talked to the the guy Prometheus. He always comes out at the end when the crowd's clear, and he's got the he's got all the science. He's the guy that's like pro foreskin, and he's uh, very vocal about that. <laughs> he always seems to come out when the crowds disperse. The foreskin <laughs> wizard. Yeah, I know that I'm, guy. Do you live in this bush? He's yeah. just like just. <laughs> I ain't heard of that yeah. guy. I don't know about no, that. I never heard of that guy. Butt hole in the sun, and he told he he told me the best advice he can give a young man. I asked I asked him his best. Yeah advice and he said that it was to put your butt in the air and get your butthole some vitamin d yes he said put your teens into the sun yeah what the fuck I know. yeah <laughs> yes 
What? I'm like, I don't want to hey, run into him. To, oh my to God. be honest, he's one of the more sane people in Washington, D.C. Yeah. That was like, that's like the best advice I've heard from the city in a long time. <laughs> I'm like, it sounds like you're asking for a different kind of vitamin D, but I don't know. <laughs> He's convinced that all the world's like uh, serial killers, it's because they don't have their foreskin, that you should be able to sue your parents if they had you circumcised. He's like, how important you need a foreskin in the winter. It keeps you warm. It's what like listening to this guy who was say natural lube and his like hands are like dirty and covered in marker. But again, like Elijah, he really is one of the more sane people I've met in DC. And <laughs> He's clear he's on there. He's, you, you gotta find him honestly you can't miss him can't he miss looks him. like a cross between gandalf and like your local 7-eleven loitering homeless person like paired with like trash collector and well, he where, walks where around. does he have yeah, he he walks walks around. Around. yeah he's always at these at, at all right-wing events he's always there no, i never, I never ran into him i have to say thank god for that yeah, I, hope I, don't <laughs> I, don't I, don't that. Like, I do not need that <laughs> distraction <laughs> Hold on, I have to. Here we go. Gotta get a picture of him up here. You guys are gonna. Traction, I'll laugh. You guys gonna like wet your pants? Hold on, here we go. And I'm just using my Streamyard technology. Here we go. Boom. I've never even heard of this software. It's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. It like allows you to be your own little engineer. Okay, so here we have. This is Prometheus. Make, <laughs> make America's penis great again, again with foreskin. Outlaw bloody trauma circumcision. I have a foreskin. I don't need Viagra. He literally looks like, ask me about my foreskin. Wow. Um, no bloody circumcision. Never seen them. Perverts. But this now you will. Of, like, fat girls. This reminds me of like, you know, those like really obese girls who like put like, you know, they're, it's always the ones that are the fattest and the ugliest that are always like, I have high standards on like Instagram and TikTok. Like they always talk <laughs> about their standards as if like, people are trying to sleep with you this guy's like i don't need viagra it's like yeah i'm sure a ton of women care about that sir like <laughs> you're like 65 <laughs> like, i don't think a lot of people are interested I never in ran into this guy and i hope me, not to this me time. neither i i, I, I don't he's know he's not yeah. someone i would go to war with that's for sure yeah not not my type of vibe <laughs> <laughs> at least he'll be warm in the winter yeah and i'm like Prometheus, we gotta do an episode he doesn't have an email he doesn't have any social media i'm like how do you find this like how do you find these rallies he just appears he's just like i don't know holds up a weather vane and he knows when people are in town oh my goodness he's a mystery i love yeah. him though i'm kind of attached never to each his own all right i'm the i'm the one out here talking to weirdos you guys no, are like doing know, the important we what, work we know what chrissy we know what chrissy does in the secret that's what chrissy's into chrissy's <laughs> used to talking to like porn stars and stuff about like, their foreskin yeah <laughs> the lack thereof talk to whoever um are you guys what are you guys feeling on hashtag president pelosi how much of a probability is there of this happening Lover of the house fuck yeah. her. <laughs> I mean, that ain't happening her own her own party's against her the, it says right here there's a there's a very the majority they don't even want her a speaker her own party she's gross she's gross yeah, she's I, can't, I can't stand her i have a i have a little surprise for her oh yeah yeah <laughs> people have already i'm actually i'm actually <laughs> unveiling something oh, for her man. oh uh, and, we have two uh, yeah. FBI agents just entered the chat. Yeah, hey, <laughs> yeah. it's nothing bad. Yeah. You know the big flag drops we do in New York. Well, I dedicated yeah. a big flag to her. Oh, good. Yeah, because people yeah, are, um, you know, spray painting her house. I think uh, so people are mm -hmm. also have little gifts for her. There you go. Even Mitch McConnell's house. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mitch the bitch. Mitch wow. the bitch. I'll be lying. I'll be lying if I said uh, <clears throat> I didn't enjoy seeing that. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely funny. It's uh I don't think it was Antifa though. You know, it was too obvious with the anarchist. Symbol, I think like, she did it herself. <laughs> yeah, I, think it was like, I think it was just like a I setup. I think she got people to do it. Yeah, I think she got people to do it. Oh, poor me. Poor me. Yeah, she, she doesn't even live there. You know what I mean? She's on her <laughs> she has like a ranch that she lives on, actually. And so it's like she doesn't actually live in these homes. These people aren't there. Uh these are just like frontline homes that to look like they're normal people they're busy milking the system and it to be honest it's like when it comes to someone like nancy pelosi i don't even know if their own breath in her lungs wants to be there you know like i mean i don't i i'm being serious though i mean it's it's really it's really true like be, besides just like bitching and complaining about this stuff you know we have three major problems in our country right now number one these unlimited term limits i would say are probably bigger deal than even the election people disagree with me on that but 
you know, when it comes down to legislation and as much as I love executive power, you know, when when presidents come in and out, their real job is to enforce the law. And that's why executive orders can just be overridden, just like we're going to see, you know, Trump overrode Obama's legacy. Biden, if he's put in, was going to try to override Trump's. Mm -hmm. But how do we get things to stay? It's like we got to do this legislator. And when you have people like Mitch and Pelosi doesn't matter if a they're Republican or Democrat, the same thing. You know what I mean? They, 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 you don't stay in there that long unless you unless you become a swamp creature. And so it's like there's that. And then on top of that, if we don't stop the term limits, nothing's going to change, which is where I think they like to keep us debating about the president when the right. real issue is there. But also with this, with this you know, compulsory mail-in voting, if we don't get voter ID and signature checks and audits and Listen. ways to ensure that these things are real, I mean – even in even in Australia, they have a similar system of voting, but you know they have very stringent and strict checks for your signature and your voter ID, and they have less people living in the country than live in three fourths of California. So, like you know, it's easier to, to manage something for thirty million people than it is for three hundred something million. Well, that, that's like in New York. The, um, Cuomo announced the other day that he's hosting the Buffalo Bills game. He's going to open it up. He's going to allow six thousand people to come. Meanwhile, he has all small businesses, restaurants shut down. But to get in, you have to have two forms of motherfucking ID. But you didn't wow. have to have it to vote. vote. How fucked up is that? That's why New Yorkers are going nuts. Another reason why conservatives need to listen. Listen closely. <laughs> What conservatives need to do, the thing is, we can stop all this so easily. This is going to be ended so easily. If millions of people say, you know what, mm, I'm keeping my business open, and then yeah. what? Just do it. If millions yeah. of people say, I'm not wearing a mask, now what? If millions of people, if millions of people start standing up, the problem is people don't really want to stand up. We just like complaining about stuff on social media, mm-hmm. and then you know, and then mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're right, we're right there on, with that mask on, getting on them planes. Not See, I'm me. out there. I'm, I'm boots on the ground. I go into the city. I, I, you know, I went to the Rockefeller tree and didn't wait on that line and didn't pay to go see it. I just walked right in there and did it. Me and a group of people. I go out there and I am planning when I come back. And I don't care who's listening. Maskless mobs into into the Costco, it, into the CVS. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm gonna get there. my groups together. And I'm running in in these fucking corporate stores. I miss, I miss shopping. I'll just go to shop. Yeah. I need to no, shop with a. Like I've had it. I'm always out there. I'm out there on the ground. I go to Times Square with a big, huge Trump flag, 75 by 50, walking with it while I'm getting bottles thrown at me, paint thrown at me, people urinating on me from their from their fire escapes. I, I'm out there doing that. I don't just do it on the computer. I'm literally out there. So I know what the streets are like out there. They're pretty They're pretty rough. People don't give a fuck. They're on nope. their walkies and they're like, all right, they're coming down this block now and they circle me with their before kids try to jump me. They weren't even 18 years old. I almost got jumped by four fucking kids. Listen, it, we, 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 we got to stand up, like just stop complying. Stop complying. Yeah. And it, 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 Cause I already vowed in 2021, listen to me. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm just I, like I'm just letting y'all know. I, if I don't have, if that means I can't take no flights. Then screw I'm, I'm, I'm not taking. I'm not taking no flights. And then my manager, uh, something like my, my manager was like, "Bryson, that's what's like you get money." I don't give a crap. Listen, mm-hmm. I am not wearing no mask. Mm-hmm. To let y'all know. No, I'm with true. You know. I'm with you. It's well, it's an interesting, it's an interesting predicament with this kind of like, you know, non-compliance. Like I was in Kroger, which I don't even like that store. And I was in there (laughs) without a mask on with my wife on New Year's Eve and this like disgusting, you know, epidemically, you know, induced uh, creature from the, you know, like 300 pound woman. (laughs) Oh, telling uh, you about health. Yeah. (laughs) Was like. Oh my God. It's like, first of all, nice using God's name in vain, you know, but oh my God is like, I can't believe it. Not wearing a mask. And it's like, woman, you're mad. My mask is down. You can't even keep your cholesterol from going up. Like this is not an argument to be had. Like mean, like you literally can't control how much food you put in your body. And you're not like, I mean, I'm a, I'm chunkier than I should be right now. I'm not judging her because just because of her weight, it's like, ma'am, you're like, you're dying. You're literally a blob of death in front of me and you're, you're killing yourself. I'm not going to kill you. And if you yeah. died because I transmitted COVID to you, which I'm not going to cough in your direction, I'm not going to sneeze on you. But even if I wasn't a jerk and I did that, you killed yourself because you're disgusting and you have no self-control and you have a you have a you have a spiritual problem and an inability to have balance in your life. And you're upset about everyone else. It's like so I'm supposed to live in a society where I bow down to all these fat slobs who are disgusting. Because they might die. Why don't you tell them to to stop being so fat and actually stop eating take McDonald's? Care of yeah, stop exactly. McDonald's. Exactly. Have y'all seen the um, latest um, 
um, a study on asymptomatic people uh, how they cannot spread COVID. Right. Um, the funniest part is after the study came out, the fact checker Snope came out and Snopes deemed it false. But see, if you read it, if you read, they didn't deem the study false. They deem that the study doesn't say that you can't transmit COVID being asymptomatic in public settings because the study only studied uh, family settings in the house. And I said, that's the closest you're going to be with somebody. So if you didn't transmit, by the way, they said it, did, it doesn't happen. So if you don't transmit COVID being asymptomatic in your home, Close to mm -hmm. everybody. That's the mm -hmm. best freaking study you can do. And the study was like based on seventy eight thousand homes. Mm -hmm. Right. The best study You're you sharing can do. towels. Cups. It was like, 10, it was like yeah. ten million people or something. And on top of that, you know, we're okay. I can't say much, but we. By the way, that's where the fights at. We're working on lawsuits against the fact checkers. My 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 lawyers and legal team. We're working. We're like building Good. cases against them because we're going against them because they did also yeah, a video about the masks saying in a video that I shared and they you know gave my friend a strike. They took down my account, everything, and they go. Uh, Instagram tried to delete my account. We got thanks to lawyers. That's what's sad about it. So I feel bad for the average American. I have lawyers and lawyers get my accounts back up, but <clears> without <throat> them, I wouldn't have my accounts right now. They go, oh, well, this video is false because, you know, the WHO never said that asymptomatic spread didn't happen. And I go, well, the first of all, the WHO was never mentioned in this video. We never said anything about what the <laughs> WHO said. We mentioned a study. Right. Second of all, I wrote them. They forget that my whole background is in virology, genetic engineering, and I understand this stuff. And I go, all the study said is the truth. There is no asymptomatic spread. They're getting that confused with pre-symptomatic spread, mm -hmm. which means that there's a day or two of inoculation where people can will exhibit symptoms. It's not like they never exhibited symptoms and they just were like super spreaders. It's like, you know, maybe you don't feel a little well and you don't, but you brush it off and the next day you're like, oh, I, something feels, yeah. feels weird. I can't taste. And then the third day you're like, oh shit, like I'm like dying. And so you're like, those are pre-symptomatic. And the key thing about that factor is they go, well, that is asymptomatic. And I go, no, you dumbass. Two separate things. That's every disease mm -hmm. has an inoculation period. It's called like a loading, it's a loading period where the virus is replicating, like common colds, the flu, anytime, you know, you, you know, you, you, you have that friend who you hugged and then you find out that night that they were sick and you're like, okay, I'm going to get sick in two days. And you just know how that works. And you can do that with COVID too. You go, oh, I was just around someone with COVID that had symptoms. They found out today, I should probably quarantine. We don't have to be quarantining the healthy and I wrote them that and they have no they can't even refute that because it's truthful and it's like we're living in a mad world where science doesn't matter the truth doesn't matter so what do they expect from us I mean I think they're egging people on to get violent wow. well that's right I have an article 78 against uh, Governor Cuomo which is um, uh, it goes to court January 8th it's Tina Forty versus Andrew Cuomo and Halford Zucker okay and it's about show us the science show me the science for the, my granddaughter having to wear a mask, show me the science why all the restaurants are shut down so that affects my beverage distributorship in the Bronx. Show us the science why the gyms are closed down, why my granddaughter can't go to gymnastics, why my son can't box. Show us the science. I have a lawsuit against him. Well, the, well, the, the, the problem with all this, the problem with all this is if, since we know asymptomatic people can't spread the virus, that would mean all these, uh, uh, like enforce mask laws wouldn't really make sense. Right. So they can, they can't really admit the truth because they admit it that most people, even if they are no matter what side of the aisle you on, you're gonna be like, uh, so you're telling me that we've been forced to do this and then you're yeah. gonna have to open places back up. And then you know yeah. that then you have to basically open the country back up based on one study. Basically. They'd have to apologize yeah. and they yeah. can't do that. Up and obey. They would get sued, wouldn't they? I mean they, they should be that. sued. Yep. Those masks are shut up and obey. Yep. That's it. At least Wuhan gets to party. Oh yeah, I, mean, I know. Wuhan is Did so lit. Man, New Year's? I know. New Year's Eve. They I might move to Wuhan. Facts. I want to live in a free tea. country. Yeah, facts. Because <laughs> it ain't the United States right now. We definitely ain't free. Facts. <laughs> okay, wait. I want to bring up this tweet. I don't wonder if this this looks like a little bit of breaking news here. This was a call. Let's see. Trump did most of the talking on the call. He was angry and impatient, calling Raffensperger a child and either dis dishonest or incompetent for not believing there was widespread ballot fraud in Atlanta and twice calling himself a schmuck for endorsing Kemp, who Trump holds in particular contempt for not embracing his claims of fraud. That's not breaking. I, I can't. No, wait, 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 wait. Where's the other one? I can't imagine he's ever getting elected again. Am I looking at the wrong one? Do, do, do. I can't imagine he's ever getting elected again. I'll tell you that much right now. Eh. No, maybe. How, is there a yeah. God? Because he, how does he get <laughs> so much information out 
So have you ever hung out with Jack and he's just like, oh, look at this. Hey, look at this. Check this out. I just found out things that no one knows. <laughs> hey, look at this. I'm going live. I'm like, where are you getting We've taken all this serious. information? Yeah. He was hey. in Miami with us. He was in Miami with us, Bryson. Yeah. Hey, he be, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm letting you know, he be in the streets too. He gonna get that information. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, but I'm just saying, like, I want to know his sources because, like, to me, like, I have, you know, I have, like, eight, like, two sources in the DHS, a good source in the ATF, and I go, like, department by department and create, like, a network, but this guy will just be, like, something will happen, and he has the news before, he's, like, he has the news before anybody has it. And it's like, this guy's, he's a master. He's a, you know, he's a genius, by the way. He like speaks Chinese and everything. Wow. Crazy. Wow. He's like a naval intelligence mm -hmm. officer. And he like worked for the government in like finding intelligence. And that's like what he does. He's very mild mannered. And, yeah, he oh, is. He I actually, I actually, cool. um, no, he's really nice. When we did the car rally, when we did the Latinos for Trump in Miami, I, I went out with him that morning. He drove, uh, his wife was in the car with me in the back seat. I had Keith in the front. Who else was with us? There was a cool house and his wife was with us. She was videotaping for him for the mm -hmm. car rally. That's yeah. it. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, they're, not, they're good mm -hmm. people. We were just in a movie together, a, a, a Crossfire movie with Cernovich and, and Lauren Southern and some stuff. And that one came out and that's doing really well. And nice. that, actually got, that got Black Lives Matter organizers in it. And I'm really happy about that movie because – Honestly, I feel like right now, like even though uh, I know a lot of people like kind of don't like the dissident right or don't like the people who are rising up, but I know that like, you know, even though people don't like Cernovich or Posobiec or they have their own ideas of me or anybody, you know, I think that we're just making a difference, all of us, like in, even on this chat, like I think it just shows people like that movie was made for like under $70,000 and yeah. the amount of reach and the distance that it's going is insane and the amount of people that are watching it and downloads that it's getting it's like it blows my mind and i think it's because it's not coming from the right-wing people it's coming from the country who's realizing that a lot of people are writing these comments it's all about what happened in 2020 the whole political climate it's crazy to see comments of people from 2021 going i had no idea all this shit was happening in 2020 like a lot of america still doesn't know what's actually happening they're not awake like us <clears throat> and i think that what we're all doing is really helping wake people up because you're going hey maybe you're a little late in the game january 2021 barely finding out there were riots and that the world was <laughs> falling apart and the election election got rigged but hey welcome to the game you woke up you know let's keep growing ourselves one by one and i mean we had what was it 75 million so far that voted for trump oh yeah, yeah. yeah i think it's 75 yeah. million 75 Jesus. million people, the most for a sitting president in history. Nobody believes that Biden got more votes than that. It's no. not realistic. So it's like we legally we have the greatest momentum and the greatest populist movement the world has ever seen right now. And I'm kind of excited to where this is going to go because those 75 million people, the nice thing is, is they can prevent people from waking up, but you can't put people back to sleep. Yeah, but we didn't have the dead vote. I mean, that's the only place we were really <laughs> lacking. We got one dead vote, I heard. <laughs> The legal yeah. vote, the dead vote, the, the family, yeah. you know, those family members that filled out all the ballots for everyone in their household. Yeah, I know. The whole <laughs> <one>. <laughs> like she just died. She would have wanted. She no, wanted. But, no, but I, I know people. I saw people that I know. I know a lot of liberal people. I went to university. Most of my friends are physicians now and stuff. They're not conservative. They were uh, elitist type of individuals and people I've read tweets and things of people saying that they were going to fill out all the compulsory ballots. My dad sent me in California. He got four other people's mail-in ballots to his address that don't even live there. So wow. what are you going to do wow. if you're somebody who doesn't have any ethical background or you don't believe in God, you don't believe in the truth, you don't care. It's, you know, you're a nihilist, a narcissist. You're yeah. just going to fill out seven, eight ballots for people who, you know, aren't yeah. even there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those extra ballots should be stopped or checked. It's like, it's insane. It's, yeah. uh, what's the point of having people in charge? So, but yeah, I, I'm like you, Elijah, I'm hopeful. I, it's, it's, a you know, it's, it's millions and millions of people who are, uh, you know, whether the fed answer is, is fed up and, and, and smarter than they've ever been because they've had time to read and, and get with it. And, uh, it's, and I think it was, you know, after the election, it, it wasn't all magically better. I think so many people were holding out for, oh, as soon as the election's over, the ma everything will be back to normal. And then when mm -hmm. that didn't happen, I think that kind of got the last chunk of people that could have gone either way. Like, oh, yeah, guess what? It's not back to normal. And it's no. it's probably going to get a little worse. And it's not so. going to get back to normal unless we, the people, nope. take it back. The COVID mutations coming. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> get ready.
<laughs> um, this was great, guys. And uh, yeah, we're all gonna be in DC. Like, hit yeah. us up if you if you're like you're planning on being in DC. You're you don't have friends. You might be alone. Like, I don't know. Hit me up. I don't know if you know any of you else guys want to be available for that. But definitely send me a DM or whatever if you're gonna be alone and need someone to hang with. Uh, we'll be out there covering all the events. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna go around with our plugs and socials real quick. Tina, where can people find you? Well, the real Tina 40 at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Paula. I now have a TikTok. Not that I don't use it much, but I have it. And so that's really it. I love it. Elijah. You can just find me anywhere where you can find content under slightly offensive and it's probably the top account there that when it just pops up and then you can follow, subscribe and do it if you want updates to a lot of stories, ideas and things that people aren't covering um, and see it before the other meme pages steal it off the page. <laughs> so oh, yeah. you know, get, get breaking news as it happens. Bryson. Um, you can follow me on anything, but you probably won't see my content because social media companies don't like me. So instead, <laughs> if you want updates on my music, text the letter B G R A Y to 855-909-1389. And I can directly update you about my music. I don't have to worry about uh social media companies. Bryson, give me that number again. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Text B Gray to Eight five five nine zero nine one three eight nine. Wow, I love it. And I'm not going to annoy you. I'm only going to text you when I'm releasing music because a lot of people don't see my posts and everything, which is which is usual, but we can't do nothing about it, so we have to work past it and through it. Because sir, okay. complain too much and don't do stuff about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need more, more doing, less talking. Yes, yes, we do. Just being pussies. All right. There's everybody's handles down there. Look at this. Love this. Love this technology. Guys, thank you so much uh, for coming on the, the podcast. See so you guys soon. Yes. Yeah, so you guys yep. in DC. Let's oh, wait, do this. A little, pl a little plug. A little, plug. A little uh, plug. Bryson a little plug. and I are doing a podcast on Tuesday that's coming out Wednesday. So if you're not going to the march and you want to watch something, go to my YouTube channel and watch Bryce and I's conversation on an undisclosed topic. Ooh, ooh, I can't wait for that. Thanks, and everybody guys. safe travels, and I'll see you there. See y'all there. Do it. Okay.